Hi everyone, welcome back to the Syntax UK YouTube channel. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be taking you through how to use your RME interface to record your Skype and Zoom chats in your DAW. We've covered quite a few subjects in our mini series on how to use your RME interface with Skype and Zoom. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be using a few of the tips and tricks that we've seen over the last few videos. As I said before, this would be a really quick and easy way for podcasters to record interviews remotely, as well as for bouncing ideas off of bandmates and other musicians you might be working with. Now, we wouldn't actually recommend doing any serious recording using this method. For that, your collaborator would still need to record themselves in their own DAW and pass the files to you through your Zoom or Skype chat. But if you do want to record straight from Skype or Zoom for any reason, perhaps it's for quickly making a backing track or just getting some ideas down, this is a really quick and easy method for doing that. If this is the first video in the series you've joined me for and you're using an 802, UFX2 or UFX Plus, it's well worth checking out video one in this series to make sure that you've routed your interface correctly as there are a few more steps you'll need to follow to get it all working. Now, one of the great features of Total Mix Effects is the loopback function, which is something that we've been looking at in a few of the other videos in this series. In a nutshell, loopback allows all the audio from any particular output to be sent back to its corresponding input. It's the same as connecting an audio cable from the output of your interface to the input of your interface, except with loopback, all of this is handled internally via your RME interface without the need for a cable. We're going to use loopback to send the signal from Skype or Zoom to an output we're not using, which we'll then use as a recording input in our DAW. As always, we're going to start by making sure we're getting level out of our microphone by checking the gain is turned up to a decent level. We're also going to check that our headphone mix is routed correctly so that we can hear the audio from Skype or Zoom, which we achieve by clicking the headphone output to select it and turning up the volume of software playback channel AN1 and 2. If you want to hear yourself, make sure you turn up your microphone channel in the top row as well. Now here is where the loopback function comes back into play. With the sound from Skype and Zoom coming from software playback channel AN1 and 2, we're going to use an unused output to then loop this back into an input which we can then use to record in our DAW. In this case I'm using AS1 and 2 so we're going to route the software playback channel here and once we've raised the level click loop back. Now as always it's worth noting you won't see signal on the input meter as these are always occupied by the physical inputs of your interface. We're now ready to open up our DAW and get ready for the meeting. I'm using Reaper here but the process is the same for most DAWs. I'm going to create one track for my own microphone, which will use whichever input your microphone is plugged into. Now I'm going to create a second audio track for the audio from Skype and Zoom. With this track, I'm going to change the input source to AS1 and 2, which is the input I'm looping back via Total Mix Effects. To test that you're getting level, you can simply press the Test Audio button on Skype or Zoom to get a ringtone through, which you can then see in your DAW. Alternatively, as your media players like Spotify and iTunes all use software playback channel A and 1 and 2 by default, you could also play some audio through there to check that you're getting signal and that the method has worked. Also, do make sure you have record monitoring turned off in your DAW, as otherwise this is going to create a nasty feedback loop. The best method is to set your dedicated Skype or Zoom input track to no output, or to an output you're not using so that it's not being fed back out of the DAW. If you want to listen to this recording, simply drag the audio onto a new track, which will of course be routed to the master output in your DAW by default. And that's it, you're now ready to record your Skype or Zoom call. Don't forget that if you're a Babyface Pro user, you can take advantage of Total Mix Effects EQ section, or if you're using one of RME's Fireface interfaces like the UCX, the Dynamic section for applying some compression to your microphone as well. These effects are primarily meant for use when you're monitoring, but if you do want to record with your EQ and Dynamics, simply choose EQ for record in the Fireface settings program for Babyface Pro users, and EQ plus D for record option for UCX users. Setting all of this in Total Mix effects can save you time and streamline your workflow, as you can simply recall this setup whenever you want to start recording a meeting. Team this with a template in your DAW of choice and you're ready to record anything at a moment's notice. If you're looking for higher quality audio to record your meetings and interviews, make sure that you check out our previous video on Source Connect Now, which of course can be recorded using the method that we've outlined in this tutorial, as well as by using their inbuilt recorder. That's it for this video on our mini series on how to use your RME interface for Skype and Zoom. As always, please do make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel to make sure you see all our future content. And if you have any ideas or anything that you would like to see in future videos, please do pop them in the comments section below. And as always, we'll make sure we get back to you. Thanks very much, guys. See you again next time.